knowing what h0 is tells us a lot of things about the universe. So that's, that's one sort of branch of physics. It's where they're really trying to hone in, to sort of zero in on what h0 is. And the reason we do that is because it turns out that tells us how old the universe is. I think this is really neat. Take a look at this. If we have this equation, v equals h0d, that was the equation we had before. See, there it is, v equals h0d. Well, just take a look at this equation, and let's, let's delve a little bit deeper in what a velocity means, or a speed. A speed is some sort of distance over time. So we could say then that that's over here. That means we could say distance over time equals h0d. See, I've just replaced v with just d over t. So instead of v, I say it's a d over t equals still h0d. Well, the d's will cancel out because if I move this one over here, it'll divide it out. So that means the d's disappear. So I have 1 over t equals h0. Or conversely, if I want, I can solve for t. So I'll put the t up here, put the h0 down here. So I can say, therefore, t equals 1 over h0. And what this tells you, this time, that is the age of the universe. So t equals the age of universe. Isn't that awesome? So assuming that all this stuff holds true, and of course we have to assume that this is linear, it's a straight line. And if it is a straight line, in other words, if we can find the gradient of this, then away we go, we can say then that, well, then we can find the age of the universe. I think that is so awesome. And it turns out, so as long as we know, this is maybe the sort of, so why do we do this? So if we know h0, we can guess at the age of the universe. And so, as long as you're very, very careful with your units, and this is the thing is sometimes you get things, you know, H0 will be in uh, these um, kilometers per second per megaparsec, which sounds really weird, but if you slowly convert all that to just seconds, you know, then you just do one over that, because one over one over seconds just gives you seconds. So you'll find the age of the universe in seconds. So we can guess at the age of the universe. And it turns out no matter how you do this, no matter how you approach it, it seems like the age of the universe seems to be around 13.7 billion years old. It doesn't matter what way you use, almost all of the methods seem for some reason to sort of converge to this number. So for whatever reason, the universe seems to be 13.7 giga years old. In other words, 13.7 billion years old. I don't know why that should be. In fact, nobody really knows why it should be that particular number. It just happens to be that seems to be the age of the universe. And when we look then at other objects, we try to double check and see, okay, is its distance larger than this? It shouldn't be. Uh, not exactly, at least. So at least this is how we look at the age of the universe. We can do some really neat things with it. Now, last but certainly not least is new evidence for dark energy. It turns out, you remember that same graph I was showing you there, this graph of V versus D. Remember I was saying that the team of uh, scientists who use these type 1 A supernovas to do this, they actually found something a little bit strange. What they found is that these supernovas seem to be a little bit farther than expected given their recession speed. In other words, although we would expect the graph to do a straight line, some sort of straight dotted line like this, it turns out strong evidence now points that it does something like this. In other words, for some given recession speed, we expect its distance to be some certain value, but instead, its distance, you know, because now we have these supernovas of type 1a as a distance indicator, these things right here tell us things in much greater detail than we ever had. And so that tells us then that well, these things are actually farther away. And what that tells us then is that the universe is expanding. Well, it has this things that we expect to be a certain distance away, they're actually farther. That tells us that the universe is expanding faster than expected. That's what this really means, right? But the fact that you expect to see it 
you know, for, for this given velocity, you expect to see its distance here, but instead you find it over here. See, its distance is farther away. The universe is expanding at a faster rate than expected. And in fact, what this really tells us, I don't know if you remember this, I was showing you these graphs before, and this is the size of the universe, and this here is time. And we were talking about how we expected the universe to either be closed or flat or open. We expected these right here to be sort of the cases that either the universe will sort of come back in on itself or it'll stop expanding or it'll keep expanding forever. What this evidence right here tells us, what these supernovas type 1a tells us, is that it looks like the universe is doing this now. In other words, in the past, it was concave down, and now there exists some sort of reason, some sort of force that's actually making the universe expand at an expanding rate. Okay, so the universe is now expanding at an increasing rate. And the key thing here, I mean, this is really weird. No one quite knows why that should be. So the very fact that, see, we expect the universe to always be sort of slowing down. It should always be concave down, all three of these graphs. They should sort of open downwards. The reason is because gravity is attractive. Anything with mass attracts everything else with mass. So we expected, fully expected the universe to do one of these three things. And yet the evidence shows that it used to go down, and about two billion years ago it started turning upwards. And no one really knows why. So there is something is acting, so something acts opposite to gravity. In fact, it acts opposite to mass. And this is actually what we call now dark energy. This is the name given to this mysterious thing that's causing the universe to expand at an expanding rate. No one really understands this. And what's amazing about it is that, okay, the, the teams of scientists, there were two scientist teams who sort of were discovering this, this feature here. I mean, this right here does the same thing as this. The very fact that it goes upwards here is the very thing that makes it go downwards here. That's actually the same sort of result. See, the very fact that we look at things farther away, remember, this is farther back in time here. That's looking at things that are farther in distance away. And they're farther than expected. That's because the universe has expanded quicker than we thought it would, or should. And the teams of scientists who just figured out that this is the case, they won the Nobel Prize in Physics just for figuring out that there's something weird going on. They never explained what this is. So if you can figure out what this is and explain it properly, I'm sure you'll get the Nobel Prize as well. So this is, you know, we're hopefully passing this on to some cleverer, smarter scientists of the future who will maybe figure out what this dark energy is. Right now, it's sort of a big dun-dun-dun. We don't really know what this stuff is. So it's like a whole new branch of physics had to open up just to try to explain this craziness here. This makes no sense. We don't know of anything that should act opposite to matter. As far as you know, everything with mass attracts everything with mass. And yet there's something that's making matter repel from each other. And that's and it's something that's acting opposite to mass, acting opposite to gravity. The very fact that we can't see it doing it, we call it dark. Now we can see the effects, of course, but we don't see the thing itself. We can't call it dark matter, because matter implies something that acts like regular mass. In other words, attracts. Because of that, we can't call it that, so we call it dark energy. What a cool thing, I think. The very fact that our own laws of physics, or our own understanding of physics, has to be changed or adapted or adjusted based on new evidence.